Hey friends, my name is Kalpesh. Welcome to my YouTube channel Automotive Crux. In this video, I'm going to discuss about the brake proportioning in context with the vehicle dynamics. In vehicle dynamics, we need to focus on the safety and the comfort of the occupants uh, of any vehicles. Brake system it is most important component for the safe considering the safety of vehicles or while vehicle is in motion. While, while we are applying brake force on the brake paddle, that pressure is transmitted through the brake channels, brake hoses to up to the wheels. The brake decelerations available on the vehicles are simply the product of application level and the brake gains up to the point where lockup will occur. Here lockup we are considering the lockup for the axles. While applying a brake, if in any case either front axle or the rear axle locks up, then our vehicle tends to lose its stability during the movement. So during the design of any vehicle's braking system, it is preferably that both axles, front axles and the rear axles lock up at the same time simultaneously. Yet this is not possible over the complete range of operating condition to which the vehicle is being exposed. But with the help of the brake proportioning method, we can achieve variation in the brake force at front axle and the rear axle. So let's discuss about the brake proportioning method. As I said, the balancing the brake output can be achieved by the proportioning method. And to understand the brake proportioning method, we need to understand the traction force available at the ground wheel. This traction force, it depends on the two parameters. First, we are considering the dynamic load and second, it is the peak coefficient of friction. I'm again emphasizing on these two parameters, the traction force available at ground wheel it depends on two parameters first dynamic load during braking and second parameters we can consider the peak coefficient of friction dynamic load during the braking we can calculate with the help of this two expression this expression we have adapted from the theory of the dynamic axle load i have already explained the dynamic axle load in my previous video if you haven't visited yet kindly requesting to go through that video link for the same is provided in the description below during the braking the load transfer occurs towards the front axle so while considering the dynamic load during the braking we need to consider both static load and the dynamic load which is transferred due to the braking towards the front axle. So front axle load, we are considering the static load plus the dynamic load. And this dynamic load, you can write in terms of this deceleration. Likewise, you can write the expression for the rear axle load. So rear axle load, you can express in terms of static and the dynamic axle load, which is transferred towards the front. That's why it's subtracted from this equation. Now the another parameter that I have said that the traction force it depends on the peak coefficient of friction peak coefficient of friction that can be helpful to uh, achieve the maximum braking force on each axle so maximum braking force at front fxmf that is equals to mu p into wf here wf it stands for the load on front axle this load on front axle we can get from this equation substituting value of wf we are getting the final maximum braking force for the front axle in terms of deceleration likewise we can calculate the maximum braking force rear axle by substituting the value of rear axle load we are getting in terms of deceleration now by observing this two equation we can say that the maximum braking force available on each axle they depends on two things peak coefficient of friction mu and the deceleration again i am emphasizing the maximum braking force on axle it depends on two parameters coefficient of friction and deceleration as this depends on the deceleration it is difficult to get the exact solution for the previous equation we can observe the phenomena in this plot this is the plot for the brake force versus deceleration in terms of g this plot indicates the maximum braking force at front and rear axle for different peak coefficient of friction mu for a passenger car by observing these plots we can say that by simply changing the peak coefficient of friction we are getting the large difference in between the maximum braking force for front and rear in both cases this and this so to solve the previous equations we have taken the help from the Newton's second law and we can write the expression for the deceleration in terms of this. The deceleration 
equals to force divided by the total mass here force we need to consider the uh, maximum braking force applied for the deceleration plus the tractive force at rear likewise we can write for the uh, rear axle condition too the deceleration in the rear axle it is in terms of the maximum brake force applied at rear plus the front axle tractive force divided by total mass now substituting the values of dx substituting the value of this both deceleration in the previous equation of maximum braking force is the equation in the square so these are the previous maximum braking force equations now substituting the values of dx deceleration in this equation we are getting the values for the maximum braking force in terms of fx if you are considering the front axle the maximum braking force depends on the rear axle rear axle through the deceleration and associated forward load transfer i'm again emphasizing this is the very important sentence friends please focus on this sentence this is very important sentence the maximum braking force on the front axle it depends on the rear axle how through the deceleration and associated forward load transfer likewise we can define the maximum braking force for the rear axle we can say that the maximum braking force for rear axle it depends on the front axle through the deceleration and associated forward load transfer because braking condition the load transfer occurs towards the front so these are the equation that we have achieved in the previous slide with the help of this with the help of this two equation we are trying to achieve the uh, proportioning of the brake force or the brake output force this figure shows the plot for the front uh, front brake force versus rear brake force initial points of both curve that can be achieved by considering the another axle lockup condition for example this horizontal line it indicates the rear brake force so to achieve the initial condition for this curve this point we are considering the front axle lockup condition front axle lockup condition so in this equation if you are considering the front axle lockup condition this term it becomes zero and finally we are getting the initial condition for the, that curve it is mu p into wrs divided by 1 plus mu p into h by l so this indicates the initial condition for the rear brake likewise we can identify the initial initial point for the front brake curve by considering the rear brake lockup condition so considering this fxr it is zero so our initial point becomes mu p into wfs divided by 1 minus mu p into h by l so by observing these lines which are indicating the front lockup condition and the rear lockup conditions we can say that the line for the front brake force it goes towards the positive side and it goes upward side simultaneously too likewise the rear brake force the curve for the rear brake force goes upside okay and slightly towards the left side the point at which both curves are intersecting that can be achieved by the manipulation method and the coordinates for the this intersection point they are indicated by fx fi and fx ri and that can be calculated with the help of this equation so so proportioning line in this graph we can achieve by generating a straight line from the origin of this plot towards the intersection point so this constant line it indicates the proportioning line for any for particular vehicle the slope for the front brake force line it can be calculated with the help of this equation likewise the slope rear brake force curve can be calculated with the help of this by observing this two equation by observing this two equation we can say that the slope of both curves they are depending on the friction coefficient mu and the height of the center of gravity h by slightly increasing the either friction of co uh, friction coefficient mu or uh, height of cg we can increase the slope of this curves with the help of this curves you can you can easily uh, get the combinations of front brake force and the rear brake force to achieve the uh, proportioning for any brake system the gain of the brake the gain of the brakes on front and rear wheels is an important factor to determine the brake proportioning brake force on each wheel can be calculated with the help of the simple 
equations break top divided by r this equation i have already i have already explained in my previous video for the break factor so if you haven't visited that video for the break factor you can visit the link for the break factor video is provided and the break gain can be represent by this equation g into p a divided by r where g it is the break gain uh, it can be calculated by the simple by taking the ratio of torque to the pressure and here pa it indicates the application pressure by utilizing the hydraulic proportioning valve we can achieve the break proportioning in any hydraulic braking system this hydraulic proportioning valve provides equal pressure to both front and rear brakes up to certain pressure level and then reduce pressure to the rear brake for the design pressure level it distributes the equal pressure to front and rear uh, brakes if the application pressure it exceeds the limit of designated or the design pressure level then it reduces the pressure to the rear brake due to the load transfer occur towards the front side so it adjusts the brake torque output on front and rear wheels in accordance to the peak, tra peak traction forces possible a hydraulic proportioning valve can be designated by a particular method for example we are considering this value 500 divided by point 500 divided by point 3 this is a designation method for any hydraulic proportioning valve now what does this what does it indicates it indicates the pressure level to the front and the rear brake is equal to the 500 psi this is the design pressure for which this proportioning hydraulic proportioning valve is designed if the application pre pressure is above 500 psi that means above the design pressure then pressure at rear brakes increase at only 30 percent of the rate going to the front brake this we can understand with the help of this example we have considered design pressure we have considered 500 divided by 0.3 that means for application pressure less than 500 psi front brake pressure and the rear brake pressure will remain same which is equals to the 500 psi in this case in case the application pressure is higher than the 500 psi which is the design pressure for this proportioning valve then what happen then the front brake pressure it is equals to the application pressure application pressure it is 700 psi which is higher than the 500 psi then the front brake pressure must be equal to the application pressure which is 700 psi and the rear brake pressure it is reduced as we have discussed in this point okay it is reduced by 30 percent of the rate going to the front brake so 500 which is the design pressure plus 30 percent of the increment so 700 minus 500 so 200 multiplied by 0.3 so we are getting the brake pressure at rear which is 570 psi which is which is less than the front brake pressure and this is the requirement generated due to the front load uh, load transfer occurs towards the front due to the brake applied now considering the anti-lock braking system we are very well aware with the uh, construction and the working of the anti-lock braking system so uh, considering the wheel speed versus time plot when the vehicle's wheel speed is high vehicle's wheel speed is high and when we applied a brake at first place it suddenly reduces the vehicle speed okay. and when the vehicle's wheel senses the slippery surface okay and it, it requires higher braking brake pressure it goes towards the phase two that means a sudden reduction in the speed okay and this phase three it indicates the locking condition of the wheels so with the help of uh, that electronic sensors we are releasing the uh, pressure into the uh, brake system and this process it will repeat continuously so this is what about the anti-lock braking system and this we can understand uh, in terms of brake brake coefficient of friction too wheel uh, percentage of wheel slip versus braking coefficient this it indicates the first phase application phase where the coefficient of friction 
uh, suddenly raises we, we uh, our vehicles will it phases some percentage of slip this is the peak of the braking brake coefficient and then this tends to the towards the lockup condition so maximum braking force applied at this point and during the lockup condition the braking coefficient it will tend to decrease thank you guys thank you for watching this video so this is what about the uh, brake proportioning considering the vehicle dynamics if you like this video don't forget to subscribe this channel